Hey, everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean like all 10 of you. Uh, you know, you always run the risk when you do a Aaron Live last second live stream that, uh, you know, it takes a while for people to find out that this is actually going on. Uh, if you are watching and happen to be, uh, uh, you know, have Twitter or Facebook open, uh, just uh, let everybody know I'm doing this and uh, so we can get a decent crowd in here. Not that that's going to affect my performance. Um, okay, so what am I doing here? Well, I promised you guys yesterday, if you tuned in and saw uh, the launch party that I had yesterday for the second printing of the Wraith of God graphic novel, uh, this thing right here. Now, this is the last copy I have of the first printing. And as you can see, that it's got like a smudged signature on it. And there's a line across here from silver ink. Uh, but anyway... So I've had people asking me, hey, can, how do I get a copy? And I'm completely sold out. What do I do? Well, I'm going to do, go to a second printing, which has a new cover on it. So that's the incentive for everyone to buy. But anyway, the uh, so we did a launch stream for that yesterday. The link is in the description of this video. If you want to go there and check that out and get one, uh, I'd appreciate it. We need, to, we need to raise at least enough money to cover the printing costs. Um, so... You know, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your enemies to back it. If they haven't, if you don't have a copy, if you haven't read it, then by all means, get this. Uh, it'll be a low print run. So it'll actually be a lower print run than the first printing. So, you know, in terms of collectability, it probably be more valuable. At least that's that's the story I'm putting out there. Uh, anyway, so the link to that uh, campaign is in the description of this video, as well as the link to my Blood Hunters campaign, Wraith of God Blood Hunters, which is basically Wraith of God two. Uh, that's also ongoing right now. But what we're doing today is we're going to paint a little bit, going to use some watercolors. Maybe I'll throw in some acrylic. I don't know. Uh, but let me uh, let me say hey to everybody who's here. Uh, Jeff Potts is here. Uh, Lewis Bright Raven got his t-shirt. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Glad it showed up safely. Jeff Potts. Frankly, Zero Zero is here. Good day, everyone. Thank you. Fly Fox Pro. Amanda B. Hey, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Um, Shelly just got her nails done and walked in the door downstairs. That's why the dog is going nuts. Uh, David Pentecost comic book art. First time ever catching your live stream live. Well, thank you, David. I'm glad you're able to do that. Um, if you haven't before subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, okay. So let's get rock and roll. And I may, I probably won't, but I might have, uh, I put out invitations to David Williams and Kelsey Shannon, my gray beards partners saying, Hey, I'm going to be painting if you guys want to come on. And you know, so I don't know if they will or not, but, uh, what did I get up for? Oh, I got to switch cameras. <laughs> I don't have to get up to do that. Um, it's right here on this little button thing here. Where is it? Nope. That's not it. There we go. Too many options. Okay. So, Hey, Leg Kick's here, which is great because Leg Kick is almost always here. So it's good to see him. Uh, <laughs> they're already drawn. Um, it's This is more of a booty thing. Uh, um, this is when I was going, uh, you know, going, dare I say, hog wild on my sort of Frazetta kick, which comes and goes. Um but I thought I wanted to do a, uh, a girl with a big booty and some big thighs and calves, kind of in the Frazetta style. Shut that dog up. Oh, they close the door. Hey, Shelly. Yeah. I'm streaming. You're screaming or screaming? I'm screaming at you to tell you I'm streaming. <laughs> hey. um, okay. So where were we? Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to clean up all the sort of messiness of this, or at least a little bit, uh, before I start laying the paint on, uh, because I just look nicer, you know, and I'm not going to ink this. I'll show you what I'm going to do later. I think I'm going to go over it with colored pencil, but we'll see. So I just want to get some of this extra line work that's just, you know, from the sketchiness of all this. I was going to do this as like a finished piece, a finished, finished piece. I was going to, I, I actually, 
made a scan of this and then uh, was going to light table it onto a bigger piece and, and, you know, make a print out of it and everything. But then I was like, I've got another piece that's similar to this that I've already got ready to go that I'm going to use as a print. And I didn't want too many things looking too similar um, because diversity is the name of the game, right? Um, okay, so that's this is fairly clean, clean enough for my purposes here. So anyway, this will be technically a watercolor sketch, although I'm going to try and do it fairly tight. Um, yeah, let's see. Fly Fox Pro says, I wouldn't mind seeing a Jungle Girl type comic from you in the future. You know, it's funny you should say that. I actually have a fully developed intellectual property, as they like to call them, uh, with that, uh, that type of subject matter. It's um, it's really an interesting thing. I'm looking for something right now, so I'm farther away from the mic. That's why I am uh, may sound distant. But I may sound distant, but I want you to know that I'm, I'm right here with you. Um, the thing with it is, you know, how do you, how do you do all these different IPs um, at the same time? You really can't. So I have to sort of, uh, got it. Where's my, uh, there it is. Uh, I was looking for my hair dryer. Um, this wonderful gadget, JC Penny 1200. Um, I'm not saying it's the best, uh, I'm not saying it's the best uh, hair dryer that money can buy from the 1980s. I'm just saying it's the only one I've got. Okay, but anyway, so it's difficult to know, you know, because everybody likes genre, right? And they have a different genre that's their favorite. So I have people asking me, hey, when are you going to do a you know jungle comic? Hey, when are you going to do a sci-fi comic? Hey, when are you going to do this or that? You know, it's like, so I have to determine what most people are going to want and uh that is a that is a challenge i must admit let me clean up my dinosaur here too but see i have such diverse interests myself that i i don't just like create a superhero universe i go well i've got this sort of fantasy lord of the rings thing i know when i've got this sort of jungle comic dinosaur thing. I know I've got this Western monster thing. And I, oh, yeah, I know I've got this sci-fi thing that I kind of want to do. And um, I don't know. I think maybe maybe the best bet going forward after this uh, Wraith of God Bloodhunters campaign wraps up um, is to do like an anthology book. So I can do, you know, say three 20-page stories or something in every – book and then I can I can you know do Wraith of God but then I can do you know the jungle comic or I can do Space Raiders which I showed you guys uh, on Greybeards. In fact I'll run over here and grab it if I can find it. So yeah, so that's what I did on Graybeards, and that's another one of my IPs right there, which is called Space Raiders, and uh, it's fully developed. I mean, I don't have scripts for them, but uh, it's all developed, and the storylines are, you know, I've got them figured out and ready to go. I just have to actually write the script and, of course, draw it. But um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm constantly trying to figure out, well, which of these to do next kind of thing. And I don't know. I don't know. Would you guys support a, uh, a little Presti verse uh, anthology book? Here? Um, maybe the only, maybe the only way to go. Excellent question. What genre is Wraith of God? Uh, well, it's Western horror superhero. So, um, <laughs> my hair dryer. It is. Cause I used this. When I worked in a commercial art, and uh, in fact, I worked at a studio called the Art Farm, and there it is. So I, I technically I stole this, but you know what? Still works. Still works. 
Um, okay, I think we're ready. I think this is clean enough to start laying some color down. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything with the background. I think I'm just going to color the, uh, the, the figures and then the, uh, the grass down here. But normally what I would do if I was doing the background and everything, I would pick a key color for my background, which is, let's say, um, normally I use an orange-blue complementary scheme because that's my favorite. Nice booty. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, you're talking about the drawing. Yeah. Um, can't see Shelly, your booty. Shelly Showtime is here. Hi, guys. Um, Ooh, yeah, so I would like my I would cover this whole thing with blue, a wash of blue paint. And then I would, you know, go in and, and uh, color it. I'd lay in the color over the top of that. And uh, But I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to paint the background. We're just going to paint the figure of the dinosaur. And the Jeffrey. Dress Jeffrey. So let's get She's going. been doing squats. Who has? Whoever oh. that is. She's got a lifted booty. Well, she's a... Uh, she doesn't live in gravity. For Zedek. You might like a cake. GJ. So we're going to start with uh, some burnt sienna Red here. wizard. Oh, you're going to paint. Yeah. This is, How exciting is that? I use this. It's very exciting. It is. I use this as my base flesh tone if I'm just, you know, if I'm not doing anything cute and just doing a regular flesh tone. Then I will use... Do you want to show what you're doing with the paint? Or is that too much to ask? Like, sorry. I mean, I didn't mean that like, I mean, a little bit sarcastic, but. So know. I just squeeze out a little color there on the, uh, on the old uh, extra piece of bristle board. And I'll get this sort of, I don't want this heavy. I want it watered down. Cause I'm just going to put in a light uh, flesh tone over. It's just a flesh wound. All of her. And this will hey, become, Marcus. This will yeah, it's from Fighting Dinosaurs. She got a good booty from Fighting Dinosaurs. It's, yeah, it's a lot of work. And hauling the uh, carcasses <laughs> of giant animals back to the cave. Yeah. Yep. TJ says, just woke up. My wife just told me, oh, you woke up for Aaron. I said, yes. Just I know I'd still be in bed, but, you know, important things. I had to get my nails done. Hadn't been done in like six weeks. We're all laughing at how much they've grown out. Feeling better, Shelly? Well, I've felt better. Uh, we'll wait till the pain pills kick in and then I'll be like, yes. Are there drugs in feeling better? Then yes. Yeah, I sound better. Yep. Just finished my coffee. Talked to Carol. Clutosaurus. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, this kind of nice light wash of burnt sienna. But it's such a dark color, you would think that you couldn't get that light of a... Put enough water in it and... Uh, I see. I see, and if I was doing this with oil paints, I would have to use white to cut it with to get oh, it to... Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. ...flesh tone that I want. Marcus says you didn't buy the paint at the dollar store like Kelsey. No. I noticed he had like a grade school little palette thing out. He, that's how he operates. Man. I love it. I was like, it's craft day. Okay, so we have our base color in. So we're going to hit this, pardon the noise, with the air, uh, with the hair dryer real quick. Because I want to be able to layer the watercolor on there without it bleeding into the layer underneath it. That is a vintage hair dryer. It's called a hot booty. <laughs> oh. You can see how nice this, that. That uh, color's a little bit different on screen. Yeah, it's here. a little yellow on screen, but it's actually, it's it a little does bit have more a orange Peachy to tone to yeah, it. It's yeah, it's peachy looking. And it's a real nice base for your flesh tones. <laughs> GJ says his, his wife loves your hair dryer, JC Penney's. Yeah. That's total vintage. Oh, it even still has the art farm. And it still works. I know I yeah. stole it from the art farm. The art farm was the commercial art studio he worked at when we met. Yes. So I'm going to come in here with a little darker on the bootay. A little and then shadow. I rinse, my, I rinse my brush real quick and then I hit the edge with a little bit of water mm. so it the softens that edge. a little bit. Yeah. That's very nice. 
And we'll go and do the same thing over here as we... Uh, yes, Phaser Face's art is fantastic. Our first date, he took me to a restaurant where you, you know, there's basically butcher paper and crayons. And he drew a portrait of me. Well, obviously through his lens, not mine. Yeah. Yep. Hit it for a little quick dry. A little continue with your story. Drying of the booty. Mm -hmm. No, I was just to say, it still amazes me when I watch him draw, and it's been 31 years almost. Yes, Aaron Lopez is a fantastic artist, Lake Kick says. Yeah, I. Uh, Are you I, related to the Lopez brothers? <laughs> I do. I know the Lopez I know. Brothers. You were supposed to say, I wish. You'd know, be eight, eighteen feet tall. Yeah. Get him up for cash. Yeah. Say, brother, give me some cashola. Of course, she's referring to the Lopez twins that play professional basketball. And mm -hmm. they're comic book friends. They're comic book fans, geeks. Both. Both. Yeah. So we'll try to get kind of a little bit of a soft edge on the on the booty there i think my booty used to look a little like that back in the day well you know those uh i taught step aerobics for ever the um you know the studio source portfolio that we discovered underneath the bed yes that uh, was my hair wasn't that was it your face and your hair oh we didn't gosh. pose for it though i don't like your posing sister. Pizza Dan is in the house. Dan yes, Face Race. He still has the best intro on the Kings. Your, uh, right, what? your intro to Kings is so funny. Oh, the uh, Marlon Brando thing? Yes, that's what I was trying to Well, think. you got to give Shamp credit for that. Oh, that so, so good. Now, some people come in and oh, Jeff, that's good. And you totally control their watercolors to a point that it, it almost looks airbrushy. Mm -hmm. I prefer to have a little bit of painterly feel to it. So I'm not going to go too nuts trying to make this super soft. But as you see, I mean, it looks a little rough. Well, you can't really tell from there, but you, it looks a little rough. Mm -hmm. But what happens is the more layers you put on there, the richer and softer it becomes. So how do you, is that just pencil underneath it? Yeah. Does that run at all? Eh, I mean, I would, if I, was, if I was doing this like for real, mm -hmm. I mean, like, is it, this is, this is a watercolor sketch. So I don't care if gotcha. it gets a little, um, a little smeary, it just adds texture. Yeah. If I was doing this, like, as if I was doing this as a, you know, a, a painting for a print or a cover or something like that. Mm -hmm. I would probably light table this and probably with a, uh, a brown pencil or a much lighter um, graphite mm -hmm. so that it's less likely to smear a little bit. Well, I love the movement of her hair and the clothing stuff. Yeah, drawing seems very natural for Aaron. It is. Like, I guess it's like the same way people like would see me like do math or something. They're like, oh, you just do it. Like, yeah, and that's how, I mean, I still watch him and go, so you just pulled that right out of your brain. All right. Okay. I'm just going to go sit in the corner, the fetal position and realize I have zero talent, but that's okay. Well, so Jeffrey, yes, you, your wife there. wanted somebody ambitious. That's, that's all you can ask for, right? Like that's all we want for our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get us started yeah, on that. On um, but just how his brain works so differently than it took me a few years. Hit it, Aaron. Hit it. You may continue. Well, I, oh, now I forgot. It took me a few years. Oh, to, to, to appreciate how his brain worked differently than mine. Cause I'd get so frustrated. Like, you know, make a list for goodness sakes or whatever, you know, but like we say, together we make one brain. But yeah, everything Aaron does to me is perfection as well. I just look at it and go, 
like the, the recent pages you posted. Holy crap. In a good way. Like, you mean the, uh, the just the, of God yes, the, uh, all the cross yes, hatching? the cross hatching and the, I just look like your different angles. Just really, I think it's the best work you've ever done. Perhaps in some regard, yes. Well, it's just so complete because it's your writing and everything. So, yes, I like it. But even watching our daughter draw, it's the same thing for me. Like, but she's really good at like having it look like the reference, I guess. I don't know. She's got more of a fine artist vibe to her work. Yeah. And I'm more of a commercial artist. But I guess the main thing is you guys have that talent. Where Josh and I, we don't have that talent. But we have other stuff. Well, yeah, but they, you have like, you know, like stuff you can actually make a living at. Smarts. I mean, you chose to go into teaching, which is never a good way to make a living, but. No. Well, it's a great way to make a living. And it's a dumb way to make a living sometimes. So the, my AP physics class, every, every year I try at least COVID kind of messed it up, but I take them, they do a whole STEM field trip at iFly. So they have their big. You need to tell them what iFly is. Oh, I fly indoor skydiving and they do a whole thing. It's so cool. Then the kids get to go into the tube and have that big fan that blows the air up and then they can just kind of like float and they do the whole physics behind it. And it's just so cool. So they had that yesterday and they, they sent me photos since I can't work anymore right now. Oh, Dan, that's so nice. Says, I have the talent of just being awesome. Darn it. Wow, he doesn't know you very well. That's I know. I fooled everybody. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, I'm looking forward to the little Presty verse as well, DJ. Like, he did, like, he, a lot of it he just keeps to himself, and then it's like, oh, and then there's this, bah. And you're like, oh, you just, because that's what, like, his brain, especially if you have your brain treadmill on at night, it's just a creative thing, minor. I don't know what my brain does. <laughs> Depends on how much pain meds I've had, apparently. Last night I had the weirdest dreams. Oh my gosh, it was like horrible. You wake up and you feel bad. What did you do to me in your dream? It wasn't you. Oh, okay. so. It was a really like weird dream about my dad. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up going, where did that come from? Sorry, dad. But I'm kind of like, like our son in the first book, he didn't want to ruin anything. So he wouldn't look at any of the pages, anything before the finished product came out. And that's kind of. He still comes over and get ticked off because he just saw the double page spread I'm working on right now. And he's like, every time I come over here, I get spoilers. I don't want to see any of this stuff. Yeah. I read the book. But yeah, in terms of coming up with ideas, I mean, this is, you know, I brought this up before. It's kind of like, you know, you see guys that are super successful when they're young and they pretty much, you know, say someone like Frank Miller who did, you know, did all these great stuff. And then by the time they get, you know, to be my age, you pretty much have done all this stuff. And, and so maybe your stuff, your ideas aren't as good anymore or whatever, because you've used all your great ideas. Well, I never used any of my great ideas. <laughs> but you'd come so up I've with been, more. I've been well, no, but I but I'd come up with them over years, right? And never done anything with them. And it's not like I just sat down yesterday and came up with eight new IPs. Right. They're all stuff that I've been developing over years and just never done anything with. And now I got an opportunity to do it. So you're getting the best of me at the, at the uh, end of my career instead of uh, the worst of me at the end of my. Well, hopefully it isn't the end of your well, career, but I mean, I hope you still got a few years left. Maybe. Yeah, hope so, because hope I have a few. I don't know how many I'm going to get, but so Phaser Face says yes, drugs and brain chemistry is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, I mean, I guess my pain meds help me just function, but 
I don't get any of the woohoo feelings anymore. Hmm. Well, it's been a million years since my first back surgery. So there you have it. Let's all go. Oh, poor Shelly. Poor Shelly. Yeah, they say, Aaron, stop. This is not the end of your career. No. I mean, we all on the downhill, the backside, just from age, but. Well, you know. He'll draw until he just falls over. Like. Yeah, I'll be working on something when I die, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I was talking to. Booty! I was talking. Oh, no. Diaz is here. Uh-oh. In real booty! I was talking to Mark Schultz. And he was saying that, you know, this, you start to lose your, you know, your high end abilities at age 70, right? So mm. it's like he wanted to get his last chapter of uh, Xenozoic Tales done before he turned 70. And he's a couple of years older than me. Uh, so he's in his 60s already. And uh, so, yeah, so we're kind of like, okay, so if that's it, if se I can do my best work up until I age 70, then, well, I've got, you know, like 12 years or 11 years. I'm, I don't even know. Pulled in All right, anymore. Jeffrey, have a good one. And, yes, I can't wait. i, I got to finish the book I'm on, and then I am there for it. Well, thanks for joining us though, today. appreciate yeah. that. Um, thanks, Jeff. Um, I need more than one Aaron for all the IPs. That's yes. why I'm creating these, you know, like Lopez – and uh, <laughs> it's when your split personalities are really kicking in. That's right. That's paying right. off. No, I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe doing anthology books. So hey, I can baby. Do hey, baby boy. Different. Uh, yeah, mama good boy. Several different stories in every, yes. every book is it's a mama book. good boy. Rather than just one and epic tale. The color is coming through a little better, but it is more tannish. There, that's better. I think that's close. Um, but you can see, you can see. That, you're just so patient with the layering. Well, that's the thing Thanks with the watercolor laser. is you're gonna get you're gonna get like shapes and stuff, and you want to use those shapes over the top of one another to create the form, rather than try and like get really get a lot of water in there and try to blend everything like it's a. a like an airbrush or something. You can mm. do that, but oftentimes they'll end up getting muddy and really gross. So you're better off laying down layers and not overworking it, making sure your layer underneath is dry before you put on your next layer. And you just keep layering and layering and layering until you get a the nice- The magic is the finish. vintage 70s hair dryer. Yes. That's the magic. If you don't have a 70s hair dryer, you have no show. No. So this is dried out. And normally a, a normal person would throw this out, but I'm not a normal person. No. I'm going to stick my wet it, brush then. in here and create. Did you want them to see that? I'm going to stick my wet brush there in here. There we go. Because we were questioning where it was. Better be clear on the destination of that finger, finger. Doc. Yeah. All right. What well, movie was that, guys? Better be clear about the destination mm -hmm. of that finger, Doc. So I got some. Because I want to oh, make her. a little reddish. I want to, I want to make her cheeks rosy. Oh. These cheeks. Yes. Husker's chewing on your chair. It's a full day. Good job, Husker. He's like, who are you guys talking to? Yep. Why are you not talking to me? So Green Laser, thanks for dropping all the links. You're awesome. She has rosy butt cheeks. Mm. Probably want to put some of that red into these calves as well. Mm -hmm. I think my calves are still good. I think that's about the only muscle still left in my body. Oh, yeah. We're good there, though. See, I leave these highlights in there or those open spaces or the highlights, but eventually I color over them. And uh, so I could go back in with... Uh, some acrylic white at some point to bring out some like that's really still mm -hmm. a white hot spot there mm -hmm. but i may end up coloring over that a little bit and then going back in with a white acrylic at the end to sort of um 
well, that one layer doesn't, it still has that lighter tone, so it still looks rounded. Yes. Is that the right terminology? Um, bootylicious is actually what Ah, oh, would have been better. That was next. Booty. So I'm just kind of going really lightly with this red over the top of this. Good job. And then you can, uh, you can intensify in areas where they say the thin would be skin. Let me try that again. The skin would be thinner, um, like on the elbows or the knees. We're not seeing her knees, but we are seeing her elbows. And so that might be more red there, uh, maybe on the hands or the knuckles. I know that uh, Boris Vallejo would often use blues and greens around where he felt were the thinner spot parts of the skin, like the back of the hand, things mm. like that, where you, you kind of see your, you know, your Especially you. Muscles. Yeah. Um, GJ Hot Coffee and watching Aaron live. Like it. Well, we got... Almost 60 people watching right now. Nice. I would encourage all of you, if you would be so kind, as hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And keep sharing those links and all that good stuff. That's right. We need to get, for that uh, for the second print campaign to be viable, we really need to get about probably 150 to 200 backers. So that's what I'm shooting for. So spread that's that It's a nice way too. to introduce like your friends to a book that might not have heard about it, known about it. And then I think it's great because then the second one will come in right afterwards. Yeah. Many of you are getting uh, your t-shirts. Um, yeah. Very cool. I'm shipping those out daily. Um, but I'm not doing a full on blitzkrieg of shipping. I do a, a certain amount of day time of day then i get back to work so i can so then the, yeah. sh the shirts aren't going out as fast as say the books will uh, once i get those in well and and it's, it's just weird that the printer issues we're having same computers almost but it's All just with the labels yeah yeah i tried it again downstairs and it still didn't work that's so annoying so my laptop's not gonna so, Eric Medved? Yes. It's you. How are you? I'm all right. I, uh, it's been kind of rough, but I'm going to see the oncologist in May. May? Yeah. And I'm going to ask to be, see if I can try a different med because this med is just, well, they're all like the same class of meds, but sometimes our bodies react differently. And I'm hoping with a different one that I won't hurt all over. But I keep telling myself it's better than the cancer coming back, but oof. some days. Dog bringing in his toy, working his chew toy down there. Yep. So Fly Fox Pro yes. just says, um, He's got multiple comic projects that people have paid says paid me to draw for them this year. I've come a long way since That's I handed great. you my first printed mini comic a few years ago. That's excellent, man. Yep. Good for That's, you. As long as you keep moving forward. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, it's I just gotta hang in there for another. Well, another year from now, I should have my big surgery done. And yep, I just wanna. Be here for my kiddos. And, you know, what would Aaron do? Holy cow. What would I do if Shelly wasn't here to uh, <laughs> torment me? He'd have to pay someone to come in and be sarcastic and abuse him. <laughs> That's right. Right now I get it for free. For I don't free! Pay, I don't want to pay for it. Uh, what I'm doing here now is adding a little bit of what we call mauve. Uh, Thanks, DJ. That's a great idea. Let's say less intense. We're having two different conversations. But yeah. Um, it's a less intense violet. It's really nice for flesh tones. Move up a little bit. And, uh, hmm? I'm going to move it up a little bit. Um, there we go. Because I couldn't see that. So I'm kind of working it into 
where my shadow areas would be. And one thing you can always do, if you get like a spot on here, you don't like the way it looks, you water your brush down and then you just go like this and rub that color to the side and it'll pretty much flatten out. And then when it's dry, you go back in and can layer again. Uh, so that's one way to solve a problem if you've got like a just an ugly spot of paint, mm -hmm. which isn't that big of a deal, but it is on flesh tones, especially on female flesh tones, because you want everything to be kind of smoothish and, you know, because the whole idea is to you're painting something that's supposedly attractive. Uh, guys, you know, can be you can do a little bit rougher on them because they're a more rugged, more not as uh, it's kept. Yes, it's up kept. <laughs> That's how I always solve any problems I have. I've got like a like a, a part in there that like has like a line or a stain of paint that's in the mm -hmm. wrong area. I don't like it. I just wet my brush and I'll rub rub it like this until it lifts. Kind of blends and it out. Just, yeah, and then you can just push it over to the side, and then it becomes part of your holding line, which is fine for that to be dark. Obviously, pretty cool. So by sword and hands, is this one of my favorite pieces of yours? It looks even better in color. Well, thank you. Um, this is, honestly, if I had my druthers, can I use that word? Sure. Um, I would be doing, you know, Frazetta type stuff. I mean, I love monsters, but um, Frazetta jungle, well, I guess there's monsters in that stuff too, right? They're big dinosaur monsters or creatures or whatever. That's where... My heart lies. Unfortunately, there's just not a huge audience for that type of material. So what, what paints are you using? These are just uh, tube watercolors. I mean, I'm using Grumbacher mostly, but... Uh, You've had those Cotman. for a long time. I've got some Cotman here. Um, I don't really... I'm not a big... I'm not big on, on brand names or anything. I just buy whatever's on sale and uh, or... You know, if I want to try something different, because I find they all, unless you get super cheap watercolors, they might get a little um, spotty. But although Kelsey makes it work and he uses yeah. super cheap watercolors, um, I mean, all this stuff is expensive. So I'm always trying to get the best deal I can. And also, you don't want to waste any. That's why, even though this sucker is dried out, all you have to do is add water to it and you've got paint. Right, so it's like I don't, I don't throw them away, generally speaking. And I can attest to that being true. <laughs> if you saw his, hey, the paint drawer. To talk. I don't know. Husker. I want to let everybody know also that I've got some tremendously bad. Um, see, I fooled you there, didn't I? Tremendously bad. bad. Bigfoot videos coming up on Sunday, so you don't want to miss that. Well, and then we probably then should transition into Harry Man. That's a good, yeah. So, Shelly, explain to what you called me down to watch the other day, because I'm still not sure what I was watching. Well, it I can't remember what channel it was on. It was like Discovery or something, yeah. wasn't it? Well, and I don't watch regular TV hardly at all. But anyway, so... Like, Aaron, Aaron, come down. And it was um, the Alaska Triangle thing. Okay. And they, go ahead. I was going to say that, okay, so they created this Alaska Triangle, which is essentially like they're saying it's like the Bermuda Triangle, but it's in Alaska. The problem is the triangle is so big, it takes up the entire Alaska territory. Yeah. So it's like, how is that a thing? Right. It's like, look at all the people that have died in the triangle. Okay, why don't you just say, look at all the people that have died in Alaska because the Ala the entire Alaska. Right, the entire Alaska state plus some water. water um, but they're, they had these, you know, three guys looking for, and they called them Harry Man. And how, you know, in this town that is no longer, it's like a ghost town or whatever, um, they were finding, you know, dismembered bodies and raw and it they attributed it to Harry man but that was a long time ago so they're still out there looking for him which to me suggests that they would need to breed which you know they didn't say Harry man and here's his you know here's furry, chick. Yep. Um, furry, man and furry chick in furry chick yeah, I like it. um but yeah but it was so 
Bigfoot-esque. I was like, Eric, you gotta come see this! Of course, they had nothing on film. or anything They else. had some um, infrared, which, of course, you just saw a blob. Um, but, yeah. They thought they'd get the infrared, but they don't. They still can't get a decent picture of them. Continues to crack me up, because I was watching these trail cam videos is where I find a lot of these things. And they had this, uh, they have these great shots of bears and elk, even at night, great mm -hmm. shots. And then they get a shot of Bigfoot in the day and it's all blurry and fuzzy and you can't tell what it is. He gives off like a electromagnetic thing that, so nobody can focus well, in on that's it. That's what they're, they're actually, that's kind of, they're theorizing now. These big oh. people are theorizing that he's interdimensional hopping. I mean, we joke about it, but that's actually what they're. Oh my goodness. And that's why they can't get a clear shot of them. Well, where is it that there was like Stinky Man? Stinky Man? Wasn't there one that was, was like... Skunk Ape? Yeah, Stinky Man, Skunk uh, Ape. You know, same. As you can see, kind of like Sequential Treasure says, oh yeah, give me the booty. There it is. There it be. So we want to get a Doing little bit more... Squats. We want to get a little more red up in her Excuse upper me? torso. Okay. Not just on her bootay. On her bootay. Bootay of the day. And her calf. Um, which reminds me, we'll be doing, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we'll be doing Sequential Treasures and I will be doing Comic Art Convo. Uh, I can't remember what the topic is, but I'm sure James does. But that'll be tomorrow at four mm. Pacific time. That's a fun one. Did you know it snowed in Newburgh today? It snowed here. What? When you were sleeping, it was coming down. Like the flakes were that big what the? I mean, i'm not kidding and uh, of course that's it didn't why stay. my body hurts so bad today too is but i was like change of weather it's like you know i was i was i went from being old man old man winter to young man of spring but now it's like but apparently it's still winter Ugh. the topic is favorite animated films i can't believe you didn't remember that oh yeah that's right okay. oh yeah that's yeah well, but yeah when i because my very important nail appointment this morning and this lady's car had snow on it. And I was like, what is happening? This is the latest in the, that I remember getting snow. Not that I sit and, you know, mark that stuff down, but it's a cold year. It is. Yeah, it's just weird having snow this late. We don't usually get we get snow about once every five years if we're lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. Mm, I think a little bit more than that. Mm, three to five years. Maybe I'll go there. Yeah. Remember my second year in college, we had like 11 snow days in a row. It was awesome. Well, you were out there by Mount Hood anyway, Mount Hood right. Community College. And so, yeah, you're going to get a ton of snow out It was there. great. S sledding, hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. It was awesome. All righty. I'm about to... So, basically, all I've used on her figure is that red, which in this case was vermilion <clears throat> and i'm not that's a little bit more of an orange red <clears throat> i don't uh i don't have a particular favorite red because i think once you sort of water it down it, i'm just trying to get something that looks kind of red um but um and then the um uh, the, the burnt sienna and then a the little uh, mauve in there for the shadow mm -hmm. is, is pretty much all I'm using. Britsky the Great is here. Salut, Excellent. chat. Salut, Shalina. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it very much. I would like to take a moment to remind everybody that there is a second chance campaign for Wraith of God Blood Hunters. Uh, it's basically the second printing of the book with a new cover, and it is in the link to the description. Let me try that again. 
The link is in the, in the description, description of this video, as well as in the a link to uh, the Blood Hunters, Wraith of God Blood Hunters campaign. Um, and I'm happy to say that the Second Chance campaign is not shadow banned yet. Awesome. Let's hope it stays that way. And um, but anyway, if you guys would continue as you have been sharing those links um, through Appreciate social media, it. that always helps. To Especially reach. Blood Hunters. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the second printing campaign is only going to be up for 30 days and then it is over and going to the printer. Oh, I didn't know that. So um, you don't want to wait too long. And then mm -mm. if you haven't, if you don't have a copy of the Wraith of God number one, uh, you don't mm -hmm. want to miss out again. So anyway, that's, that's my infomercial for now, now back. Back to our scheduled programming. So GJ says, uh, we need monsters back on the voting poll for Graybeards. I keep putting it up. You guys keep voting it down. <laughs> Let me get a little bit more shadow on this back, I think. Uh, this week, the uh, categories is going to be uh, Lord of the Rings, um, Narnia, or Shelley's favorite, Dark Crystal. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> that one wins. It's going to be a bad day. We know you won't be coming in here. Nope. So I've tried to create a little bit of shadow back there on her back side. So Art of Roy says, Brian Stelfreeze always lays down a wash of purple on his painting. It seems to really work as undercolor. Yep, that's you true. talked about that in the beginning about the blue, I yeah. think, didn't you? Well, as a background color, but yeah. with you, what, what he's talking about is um, there's a color that's basically purple, but an oil painting color that's called Mars Red. And that's what... Um, it, it blends real nicely with flesh tones. And uh, that's what uh, Norman Rockwell would always do an underpainting mm. of his figure work would be. No, I got my new one. Oh, you got new ones. They fit better. Um, yeah. That would, that he would use that as an underpainting. And actually I did as well. I've got a, uh, mm. you know, that painting I did of Bor uh, Boris, uh, Bell Lugosi as Dracula, the mm -hmm. guy used in that book cover in Europe. Mm -hmm. Um, that all, all the underpainting was done in Mars, hmm. Mars red or Mars violet. That's no, Mars red. And then uh, painted over the top of that. So Grain Laser has a good question. Why are you skipping her face? Uh, because I'm going to really zero in on that. So I'm going to bring the camera down here so you guys can uh -huh. see it real close when I do it. Um, and so I wanted to get this out of the way first. And, and is that in. Bristol board? Or is that yeah. just, yeah? Yeah, it's just, it's just two ply. I think it's two ply. You have to go look at well, now. I'll go look. Well, tell out. me where it's in the top drawer in the flat file over there underneath the dinosaurs. Okay, underneath the dinosaurs, underneath the dinosaurs. Mm. Yeah, walking is a little sketch today. Um, is it? It's a blick pad. This one, yeah. I don't always, I mean, a lot of people use Strathmore, but this Blick is basically the same stuff. And uh, it's like, it's probably made by Strathmore, but just for Blick. So, I mean, this stuff is perfectly fine. Um, if I'm doing serious watercolor though, I've got, I buy like water sheets of watercolor paper. I usually much heavier than this. Um, I mean, not like, like board, but it's paper that you can still use on a light table, but it, it's just heavier than this. And it, you've got your hot press, which is super smooth watercolor board if you want, you know, a real smooth surface to work on. Or you can get cold press, which is going to be really bumpy and rough and create texture if that's what you want to go for. So. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Oh, 
Well, if you have to depart, yeah, it's all right. Can't sit for very long. Um, so is this coloring style based on Alfonso? I can't even read that. Okay. Sir Piri's mm. style? Um, I'd love to say, yeah, because it'd make me sound super arty and pretentious, uh, but no. I did, uh, uh, this is mostly me figuring out how to work this stuff on my own. I mean, I, I did look a lot at Alberto Vargas when I was young and, and he had one of his, one of his books had like a two pages of technique section in the, the back of it that I sort of, um, adapted some of that stuff or should I say adopted, mm -hmm. um, some of that, but a lot of this stuff is, I mean, I never, I never had formal education in art. So I, everything I picked up is pretty much self-taught with the exception of a few oil painting classes I took. Um, and it's sort of just figuring out what the medium does that you're working in and then trying to get it to do what you want it to do. And I know that there's, you know, if you, if you take a class from someone who knows what they're doing, you can, it's a, an easier way to get, to the end result, mm -hmm. which I never had. Um, I mean, I, I got some education in when I worked in commercial art. Um, that was helpful as well. So did you remember the name of the ominous floating character on the debut of those new characters? GJ um, wants to know. He, actually, I can tell you. And then we have a $5 super chat. Woo! Thank you much. Good so Eric... Great. Medved says, can't wait for the further adventures of the little Presti verse. I love continuity and your world is such a great escape. It is for me too. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for the, we're going to say just thanks for the, what you fill in the blanks, whatever you guys want. Oh, <laughs> he just says, thanks, thanks for, the for the, the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So our main characters are the Roy, or Royce Falcon and Del Omega. And they have a little robot that I put in there called Bolt. Um, Okay, let's see. Here's the story. Do, do, is that do. the? the yeah. Thing that, yeah. Yeah. What he's, thank you. What he's referring to is this piece I did on graybeards, uh, and everybody mm -hmm. wants to know who the villain is, and I'm like, well, I, I can't remember his name. <laughs> uh -huh. So now I'm going back to my, my outline here. You know, let's see. That thing he's wearing on his forehead is the eye of Amanon. Is that all I just called him? Was the Overlord? I got to do better than that. Yeah, he's called the Overlord, but I got to do better than that. That may have yeah. just been a put name in here for the time being until I a come up with something kind better. Of. Yeah, um, yeah, but he has on his forehead is the Eye of Amanon, which he's going to use to try and control the universe. But will he succeed? Uh, so Fly Fox Pro says, what value, if any, have you found studying film? Uh, quite a bit of value in storytelling. Yeah, I would bet. That's what I got out of the film school. Um, writing, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I spent a lot of time in screenwriting classes, um, even took them as um, electives when I didn't mm -hmm. have to. Um, cool. And that's how I approach most of my things is if I'm writing a, a screenplay. And then what you'll find out is when you do that, you don't have enough action because in your comic book, you want to have action. And so then you go back in and re-edit it and say, I need a longer fight scene or I need, you know. All right. Lovely chat. Yeah. Lovely Aaron. I'm going to go back to bed. All right. So I'm not going to do any more work on her back because it's dark enough now that I'll probably go in and drop some highlights in with some acrylic. But let's finish her face first. And thank you, Shelly, for joining us. Um,
Fly Fox General. I, Fly Fox Pro. I have a general studies degree, so my education is basically nothing. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, you know, there's unfortunately there's some truth in that, isn't there? The only thing I miss about college is well, some of the fun stuff of college is I was really smart when I was in college, and uh, education was like super important to me, um, and so I always wanted. I wanted to find stuff out, and, you know, like to debate people and discuss topics. And now I don't care. <laughs> so, I would go and, uh, you know, see movies that were supposedly intellectually stimulating. And uh, now I go for pure entertainment because I don't want to be uh, challenged when I go to a movie theater. I'm challenged in day-to-day -day life. <laughs> We're just as soon. Uh, not have to think too hard. The last Christopher Nolan film my son went and saw, Tenant or whatever it was called. And I said, um, I said, well, did it make any sense? Because it looked like it was just really kind of high-end confusion. And he was like, well, yeah, sort of. He said, but I really kind of need to see it again to, to, you know, make sure I got everything. And I went, you have to go see a film twice to figure out what's going on. I don't want to go see it once. And I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. You know, I loved the Batman movies, and I loved um, um, The Prestige. It's, like, still one of my favorite movies. But, you know, uh, what was the one where they... Uh, where they went into everybody's dreams. What was that called? Um I liked that one, but that's about as far as I want to be pushed in terms of intellectually. So, Inception. Took me a minute, but yeah, someone just said that they really like Batman Begins. That is my uh, yeah. Eric Medved's got me Inception. Uh, GJ Martinez says I really enjoyed Batman Begins. I really that's my favorite Batman movie. I know everybody thinks the one with the Joker, Heath Ledger is like, you know, somebody once called it the, uh, the what did they say? It's the Citizen Kane of comic book movies for comic book geeks or something like that is how they described it. It was a very pretentious film reviewer who said that. And, but in some ways it is. I mean, it is sort of the Citizen Kane of uh, comic book movies. And uh, so my son loves that one. But I don't think it's as fun as Batman Begins. Batman Begins to me was, was more, it was the most Batman film of all those films. When he was like, when he's no longer in his uh, Batcave, when that whole thing got destroyed, and he's like in downtown Chicago, and they're using Chicago as Gotham, I was like, ah, it just didn't feel right to me. And again, I thought they were all really good films, but it just didn't feel right. The first one felt right to me. And I thought the new Batman film was okay. And David Williams really likes it, but I was, I, thought, you know, you know, I didn't dislike it, but. I, mean, I could be getting burnt out on Batman too. It's like how many uh, how many Batman films do we need? You see, what you kind of lose here is the. Uh, The line work, you know, it kind of gets doled down a little bit. 
and like the details in the face and the eyes and things like that. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, the parts that I want to be darker or have more prominence, I'm going to go over with a colored pencil. Um, when I'm done with it. Okay, that hair is going to be black, so but I don't really want to use black watercolor. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a raw umber, which is a it's a darker brown. It's kind of a brown that leads into the green family. Um, it's funny when you put it out on the paper, it looks just like mud. But we we'll use that. And we'll put it on darker because if I want any highlights in here, I'll do it. I'll put highlights in with either gouache or acrylic after the fact. Because this is actually going to be used for her, her clothing, if you want to call it that. But this hair is going to end up being way darker than this is. Let's just say this is a foundation. And I will darken this up. Maybe I'll get like an ultramarine blue or something, which is a really, really dark blue. Uh, mix in here with this. I don't know. We'll see. This I'm kind of I'm kind of drawing with my brush here. Because this hair is very, you know, it's very loose and wispy anyway. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not all that concerned about how slick it looks or anything. It's because I know I'm gonna go over this again and again and again to get it darker. It actually looks darker on the camera right now than it does. Than it does in actual real life here. Okay, so that gives us at least a start. Um, I could make her a redhead, but I don't want her to be Shanda the She-Devil. Uh, interesting story, uh, bringing that up. Gary Martin, of course, says, forget the hair, you got the important part done. Um I got approached by uh, Dynamite many years ago. I mean, actually, I was still down in Florida. And um, they wanted me to create a jungle character for them. And so I was going to do it. and uh, But then they decided to go with some guy named Frank Cho. And so Frank ended up getting the gig, and they he created some jungle chick character for them. So I can't really blame him, I guess. But uh... 
So yeah, I'm going to use the same paint color that for her uh, animal skins. I mean, I don't know what you call this. It's not like her her caveman bikini. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Um, now I'm leaving those highlights there, but they're not going to stay because that's that's way too hot of a highlight for a piece of fabric, obviously. So it was snowing earlier this morning, and now it's raining outside. Uh, let's see here. Um... Evil One just dropped in. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. We're uh, over 60 strong right now, so that's great. I never know what to expect audience-wise <clears throat> when I do these uh, last-second live streams because I don't announce them. I just sort of do it. And uh, the idea is to try and get some people that wouldn't normally – check your show out to be surfing the internet going, hey, what's this? And come and check you out. So if you are one of those people, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it greatly. The great thing about subscribing to a channel is it's absolutely free. Once I finish this... I've got a nice double page spread over there that I've been working on for a week. I've got to get that done and move on to the next. Um, but that's that's the uh, God, that's what I hate about splash pages and double page spreads. In fact, I did a blog on my old website about why I hate double page spreads. There's so much pressure to do something really, really cool that and it's such a big piece of art that you draw something and you realize, like on this one, the wraith is on it, of course. And it's like, if I, uh, I, I get the thing drawn, I get it laid out, then I'm drawing it, and I look at it, and I'm like, the wraith is too small. Uh, and you don't realize it until you've drawn, like, everything. And you go, you know what? He just looks too small. And so then you gotta, <laughs> you got to start over. And uh, so I, you, know, you end up drawing something multiple times, and uh, which is the case with this one. And that's why it's taking me so long. But they are cool, you know. When you finally get the, the finished product, oops, sorry about that. They're very cool, but they are a pain in the butt. All right, so now we've got her jungle attire. Let me put some. Now, since this is technically, 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 do you see my, my quotes, my air quotes here? Technically, looked like I was squeezing her booty. Um, an orange-blue complementary, I should be using. I've been using violet in the shadows, which is, you know, pushes into the blue family. It's also in the red family. Um, I want to get, see if I can find some Prussian blue in here. There's Payne's gray, but that's not really what I want. Actually, this might work. This is, well, as you can tell, I was this is I was using raw umber for this for her hair and then the her like bearskin bikini. I might go into this is a brown, but it's a much darker brown. You can't tell. Well, you can a little bit. There's there's a pretty good difference in the darkness here. So this is, let me use this for the shadows in here and see how that works. Normally, you would figure out your color scheme for a painting before you start. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. If I was going to do this as a finished oil painting, I would do this first. Probably not to the level of detail I'm doing it now, but to kind of get your color scheme figured out 
so that when you go in and do your painting, you've got it figured out and you're less likely to ruin it. Um, now, some people have described that as, well, it's kind of like painting by numbers. In a way it is. But again, you, if you get everything figured out, the idea is to do the best piece possible because in most cases, you're doing it for a client, whether it's commercial art or, you know, um, a commission or something for somebody. Uh, you want to know what you're doing before you jump in and do it so you have a better chance of being successful with it instead of figuring it, figuring it out as you go, which is kind of what I'm doing here. Now I'm, I'm kind of using a <clears throat> brush stroke here, almost like if I was inking this, you know, doing feathering, because this is a, this is a uh, made of fur. So it would have texture on it like that, or it could have texture on it like that. So there you go. So now we've got some shadow and some lighter areas in it. Try and create a little bit of volume. This all under here is all gonna be shadowed. All right. So we'll hit that with this dark color. And you can tell these things really, the paintings really come to life when you really start to define the, the difference between your light areas and your shadow areas. When that contrast kicks in, this you start getting depth and it, it really starts to come alive. That's why I like black and white art so much, is that it's a contrast between the light and the dark shadow areas and the highlights that really give you know, piece volume and, and uh, again, I got to admit that it's not in real life. It, it's not as dark as it looks on screen. So it's not quite as striking in real life as what you're seeing on screen. And that's the thing with watercolors. Now what you can do is I can create what you're seeing on screen simply by, I scan this and going into Photoshop and manipulate my, um, values a little bit. Um, I can darken it up a little bit, which I've often done with watercolors because watercolors tend to want to be sort of flat and uh, they don't give you that, they don't necessarily give you that richness that an oil painting will. And uh, I mean, there's people that use watercolors really effectively and, and can do that, but you can also, if you're not getting that in your finished piece, you can also go in and after you scan it and adjust your levels a little bit and you can create that sort of uh, darkness or that contrast between your lights and darks, your values uh, that really can make it pop. Um, Evil one for $2 emailed you back. I'll check my email. Thank you. Evil one pissing my dad off sending this. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, Aaron, you should do shorts before each stream. YouTube shorts get a ton of views compared to live streams. Good way to build audience. Yeah, I know. That's what everybody keeps telling me, but then I have to like do it and then I got to edit it. And uh, yeah, I know. I just got to do it. It's much easier just to turn the camera on and do it. And then I don't have to worry about editing or posting it because it's already all done. But it is true. I do little shorts of me drawing a girl's booty. I'll probably get, you know, 10,000 likes. Um, but then we can't have these wonderful conversations.
thing is, I have tons, you guys probably don't know this, I have tons of videos of me drawing short videos, actually some of them are pretty long, that are pre-recorded that are in my archives on YouTube. So I've done that, but they're so far buried, I think, down behind the newer stuff that people aren't aware that they're there. But to be honest with you, this is what I'd rather be doing is painting. It's more challenging. It's a lot more fun. Uh, than, man, I can, it's easy to say that because I've been doing black and white, you know, for 30 years. So this, this is always sort of newer and fresher to me because I never do enough of it to get really proficient at it. Um, I've done just enough to be dangerous, and that's about it. But you use you use what you learned um, doing black and white art because this is all painting. Successful painting is all about number one, the drawing, and then number two, values. And um, once you have an understanding of that, you can. It's just then becomes a matter of getting control or a handle on your uh, on your the medium that you're using, and that is just practice. I mean, you have to understand color at least to a certain degree, or at least have you have good natural instinct instincts that you can look at something and go, "That doesn't look right." Still going to go much darker with her hair, but let's see how long we've we been going. Hour and 18. Yeah, I didn't want to go much longer than an hour and a half today because I got to get some Wraith of God stuff done. But uh, so we'll get this. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to get to the dinosaur, but uh, do we really care about the dinosaur? Just care about the chick, right? So again, I'm not. I'm doing more of a uh, treating this hair like I would uh, if I was inking, getting some lines in here, along with some shapes. And I'm gonna water on the brush. Sorry about the werewolf arm there. So I want to keep this hair kind of loose and flowing. Um, the hardest thing to do is, especially if you're, a, you know, a comic book artist where, you know, precision has become so much a part of what we've done over the years, that trying to be looser <clears throat> is hard to make yourself do. Um, but I think that's the most effective way to use watercolors is to be a little bit looser instead of trying to really control them and manipulate them. Because I said, you know, you end up, like I said earlier, you end up more, more often than not overworking the painting and then it looks like crap. So it's, it's, it's better to go loose than to overwork the watercolor. That's the same thing with markers. Markers, are, you know, you just, you know, you want to be quick with your markers. Um, you don't want to overwork them because they'll end up 
the same way that watercolors do. Oops. That's how you fix that. <clears throat> well, let's see. Now, what I'll do here is I'm going to take, so show you guys, I'm not obviously I'm not done, but we're getting to a point where I'm going to have to run. So I want to show you the other part of this technique that I'm going to use on this piece. Uh, let's see. Gary says, did you swipe that hairdryer from Art Farm? I did indeed, Gary. I did indeed. <laughs> Gary says, when she walks away, it'll look like two Vol Volkswagens trying to pass each other. <laughs> um. Evil One says, I feel like I'm colorblind, plus I don't get values down yet. I could never color between the lines very well as a kid anyway. Um, you know, I'll tell you, if you really, if you really want to uh, understand color, there's a, there's a book by a German guy. Named, his last name is Eiten. It's I-T-T-E-N, and it's a color theory book. So if you look up Eiten, I-T-T-E-N, um, it's, it's like reading math. I'm not kidding. It's not a super thick book, but it's a great book on color theory and understanding color theory. And if you pick that up, it'll help you immensely. Uh, values are, you know, very simply. I uh, wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll do it real quick. If you take a. This is a values 101. You take a ball, right, a sphere, right, and the light's hitting it right here. That's going to be your highlight, right? And then everything around it is gray, right? And then it gets darker as you get away from the light, right? And that's pretty much values 101, right? So it's dark here. It gets lighter as it gets to the, where the hottest light is. It's going to be here, right? Okay, but here's the, here's the trick. You treat, or I should say I treat, okay? So that's that's value, right? Is white highlight to darkest shadow, okay? Now it gets more complicated than that because you have a cast shadow down here. You have bounce light that reflects up in here. You get a rim light, but I'm not going to do that right now. My point is... This shoulder, for example, right here, that becomes that ball. Okay, so then I treat that like that ball with the highlight here and getting darker around the edges. This tricep area becomes like that ball. So you section off each part of the anatomy as you're dealing with light and shadow. And you all have the same light source. Let's say it's coming down this way. And then so your shadows are going to be on your far side. Your highlights are going to be on the side closest to the light. And you just treat... Rather than looking at this as a whole figure and, oh, how do I deal with this, you look at it as a uh, – in sections of each – as a sphere. Um, and you, it, then it's easier to get a handle on creating uh, light and shade and values. Okay, so 
I'm going to go in here with this, basically this sepia tone pencil, basically burnt sienna, Crayola, or color, no, what is that? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter what brand it is. And so I can go over it like this. Instead of with an ink line, I'm going in there with this brown colored pencil. you got to keep that tip sharp to get this the line the way you want it. And so you go ahead and go over your pencil line like this. And it gives you, again, it looks darker to you guys than it's actually showing. Uh, but it, it gives us this brown holding line rather than a, a heavy black holding line, right, that you get with ink. And it separates those, uh, you know, some of the stuff that may be running together with the color. Where everything feels sort of grayish because you don't have any solid holding lines. And this, I mean, you can do this with the actual watercolor itself or the paint. But this is an easier, faster way to do it, especially on something that is a... It's essentially a sketch, a watercolor sketch. You can go in here with your colored pencils and, you know, guys like Drew Struzan and, and uh, others who did uh, um, movie posters would use acrylic paints and then they'd, they'd use colored pencil over the top of the acrylic paints to get the, you know, certain effect. And uh, it's not all that dissimilar to what I'm doing here except I'm not doing any shading with colored pencils. I'm going to let the watercolor shading stand on its own, but I'm, I am outlining the figure with this brown pencil. And it's almost like inking it, but you're inking it with brown. And again, it looks super dark, what you guys are seeing on screen, and it's not that dark. It almost looks like ink, what you're seeing, but it's doesn't it doesn't look that dark. So it's kind of a little bit more natural feel to it, I think. And that's how you do it, right? So then you get a, uh, again, it's not done, but you get an idea of how that works and how that looks. See, I might come down here with a little bit more brown. This looks a little bit light compared to what we've got going on up in here. Um, it's interesting how the contrast on this camera, because these brown lines I just put in there look, look super, super dark, but the flesh tone looks super, super light, and it's not that light. It, it, this is a much darker uh, skin tone than what you're seeing here. It's got a lot more uh, red and orange uh, hints in it. But that's basically how I would do a, uh, a watercolor and then firm up those holding lines because that's just the comic book artist in me that you see stuff with that dark uh, holding line and you get used to seeing stuff that way and you do a painting and it doesn't really have those. These lines become more gray and so you just instinctively got to want to darken those lines. But this is a way to do it without, without inking it. You do it with a pencil and... Uh, Evil one says, thanks, Aaron. I need to find a teacher like you. Well, it looks like you found one. Thank you for the $2. Um, there's Randy. Let's give Aaron a second chance. Randy, I just sent out your T-shirt today, by the way. Um, there it is, Dan, the pizza man, Genovese. The Elements of Color by Johannes Eiten. That's the guy. Um So anyway, I mean, there's <clears throat> there's a million ways to skin a cat, as they say, right? Or a hundred ways or whatever. Uh, this is just how I do things. And there's other guys that do it differently. So I would never say this is right or wrong. I'm just saying this is a way uh, to do it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to work on that hair a little bit more in this face. Uh, but I got to get I got to get that double page spread done. So I'm going to do 
something with the dinosaur. I'm not sure what. Uh, since I've got so much orange flesh tone in her, I'll probably go blue with the dragon with maybe a um, uh, yellowish, golden, orangish underbelly, uh, something of that nature. Uh, or I could stay, if I had done a blue background to complement the flesh tone here, then I would keep I would keep him red, more in a red, kind of a brick color with maybe a uh, more of a, uh, a yellowish, greenish underbelly, uh, something of that nature. Um, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, do the, the sky in the background. Anyway, not too shabby for a watercolor sketch. And of course, I will share this with you guys when I get it completely done, but at least you understand and you've got an idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, uh, Lewis says, very nice. I've been listening more than watching, still drawing these darn animation pieces. Probably will be all weekend. I would go with green with the yellowish underbelly of the dragon, uh, probably. But again, it's going to depend. I might go red, reddish brick color with him. I might go that route. Uh, yeah, there's going to be highlights in the hair. There's going to be plenty. I got to get it dark first. And I'm probably going to drop some highlights on her. Like I'll probably, that shoulder, have a hotter highlight on it. Uh, than I've got on it right now, possibly. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to keep futzing around with it. But anyway, hey, guys, thank you for uh, joining me. Uh, we got we got the, pardon the expression, we got the meat of the drawing done. Um, and I'll be doing uh, more of these as we go along. Um, I would ask everybody to, uh, again, like and hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't uh, backed Wraith of God, or if you don't have the first issue and you want to get a copy of the first issue, both campaigns are listed in the description of this video. So please take a visit there. Uh, spread the word if you can. Appreciate all the help I can get getting the word out. And uh, there you go. So tomorrow, Saturday, 4 o'clock, Comic Art Convo with Sequential Treasures. And then Sunday at 4, uh, Aaron Live with uh, hopefully with Shelly and Bigfoot. So thank you, guys. Enjoy your Friday and uh, your upcoming weekend, and uh, we'll see you again soon.